we're recording now. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm guessing this is everyone who always wants to see caustic stuff. So I shall go ahead and share screen. Okay. So just to get started, um, this is a straight render from Vray that doesn't have caustics or the Abe effect. Um, and then like as you scroll, you can, as you can scroll, this is with the caustics, but without the Abe, which is, um, you can tell the difference in the reflections on the glass, specifically in like reflections that are on the surface below it. Um, and then this is with the Abe, and that's when you start to get this rainbow reflective quality within the glass. Um, especially noticeable when you have thickened glass portions or like angled um, glass like in diamonds or gemstones. Um, typically, as you add on these effects, it like increases your render time. So like it's fine to play around with caustics and stuff now, but um, Abe is just not necessarily something you need to have into it and it's it will make your render take a lot longer especially once you start doing really complex renders um so this is like another scene that i set up from a sample file um playing around with the caustics and this is with the caustics multiplier set to i think one and then within the caustics itself you can change the strength of the caustics as well as like how sharp or how blurred they are um, which is the photons. So this is photons 200 and then 100 and you can tell that they get blurred out as you increase the photons. So those are like the three main points which should be like enabling caustics, how strong the multiplier is, and then how soft or how sharp the photons will be. Um, I'm going to share screen because I have a 3ds file. Hey Lauren, quick question. Um, yeah. Did you notice like a significant difference in rendering time when you doubled the amount of photons? Um, so I didn't time it out for when I changed the photons, but if I had to guess, I do think it took longer just because usually when you make things more complex or make things more softer in 3ds Max, things do usually take longer. But right. if you do add on the effects, by themselves, they'll take, they'll make your render take longer, which is why we suggest doing a test render like without caustics and stuff, just to see if your scene is working. One um, thing, um, I'll quickly share and then I'll let you get back to that. Um, uh, I was explaining to Andres, who has some really complex geometry um, that's glass, right? Uh, in that case, you might definitely have to have the photons set to a higher number because the more complex the geometry, the more photons are going to be bouncing around within that object um, and onto the surface. So uh, I know a lot of people who are having that kind of pointillism, you know, rainbow dot effect is because there just aren't enough photons and there's a lot of complex geometry going on. So thank you, Lauren. Continue. Um, so like I have like um, a doc that I will share somewhere whether either on the canvas or I guess on the public folder but this is one of the links that is in there and this is like a brief overview of caustics from chaos group which will tell you like what caustics are and what they mean and like the default parameters um and then what you can do though is just you can mm, see like as how it looks like live in a way um which is something they have given it's like the different renders with the different settings and you can go in and see what exactly is being changed within the different settings, which I think specifically. So yeah, this is like what Nick and I were just talking about, which is the photons. This is generally your 3ds Max was set your photons to about 60, I think. And then as you need it to be more complex and you need more photons, you can up them and it will blur them out more which I guess it really depends on like how fast you want your render, how you want your render to look in the end, how blurred out you need them to be. Um, but anyway, that's one of the links that will be available to you along with um, 
links showing you how to set up glass materials, metal materials, um, water, and also a brief introduction to what the Abe effect is in case you guys want to see that again. Um, I share my 3ds max no um so like at first you like you just have your scene set up which i just set up a bunch of random shapes and glass objects that i had um made from last year and then the first thing you're going to want to do is pull up your material um, so you guys will be able to get this sample file. Um, it'll be posted somewhere and you can go in and look at it. And then what we have set up right now is uh, a basic HDRI, um, opaque materials serving as the background materials, and then three different materials. You have your glass, one glass two, which is colored glass, and then uh, a water material. So essentially usually what I do is I will set up my glass material first. And I'm sure most of you have followed the tutorials that I think Adam sent out last class about glass material setups, and you can review them within the links and stuff. But I know one of the things that we talked about um, that can affect your glass a lot of ways is the fog multiplier. Generally, you have fog multiplier sent to 0 0.02 with the fog bias of 0.3, which of course can change depending if you want like a milk glass effect or if you don't want your fog multiplier for whatever reason. But those are the basic settings. Um, an important thing to check um, that Chaos Group recommends is to turn off your effect shadows for these materials. This will affect your caustics. Essentially, it's like you can have them both on, but they won't produce realistic results is what the website says. So it's recommended to turn them off. I recommend turning them off because caustics did not work until I turned it off. So, water. Turn um, hmm? Turn what off, sorry? It's called effect shadows, and it's right um, next to your refract. It's this one. Thanks. Yep. Um, so then once you have your materials set up as you want them, just throw a little IPR. And I have the caustics turned on right now, but um, I'll go ahead and turn them off just to see the difference. So you have your glass and they're all set up and whatnot. And this is in your V-Ray render setups under global illumination. You'll scroll down and you'll see caustics. And normally it's set to default like this and you can't grab any of this stuff. And so you'll just turn your caustics on and you'll restart IPR because you gotta do that. And that's when you start noticing like the more like spotted effect that you guys probably have seen in some of your renders. Oh, wait. So this is the max photons that we were talking about, which is basically the light bouncing around and whatnot. Um, if you change it to advanced, you'll be able to see your multiplier, which is the strength of the caustics. Right now I have mine set to 1.5 just because I was hoping um, to push it a bit stronger just so that you guys could see it in case it didn't show up very well. 3ds Max should set it to about 1. I don't really think you should need to change it for whatever reason. If you change it, it'll get super bright. Um, even just right next to this orb, it's getting super bright. So I wouldn't recommend pushing it past uh, 1 or 1.5. Um, and I showed you earlier the difference between the max photons and the regular photons. Um, that was the extent of what I was walking through for basic rendering setups. Um, I wouldn't recommend really messing with anything else. You can look into the settings as they are described in that first link I showed you guys earlier. But for the most part, like the default settings should work 
and you should control your caustics from your render set because if you start going in to your V-ray properties, okay, well, the V-ray properties, and start messing with it here, this is going to start messing with whether your object casts or can give off the caustics or not. And you could get really lost and lose track of what's being affected or not, which is why it's recommended that you control your caustics from your render setups. But, um, I'm sorry, this... Lauren. Could you um, maybe reshare your screen? I think um, we're stuck on something else. Yeah, I was going to say that too. I wasn't sure if that was just happening. Yeah, sorry about that. Has been not working the entire time. There we go. I think we got part of it, and then I think it kind of stopped for. A second. Um, what part did it stop at? Because I can go back and. I think maybe you were playing with the photon count. Oh. When I noticed that it wasn't changing. Okay, so I wasn't changing the photon count just because I didn't want to put you guys through like oh, okay. re-rendering, re-rendering, but um. I can do that if you guys do want to see that live. No, that's okay. I was just trying to remember. Maybe you were just like, yeah. what it was. Uh, I did include like two like renders for you guys to see the difference that sh says the different photons being used. Um, but then what I was saying is that you want to control your caustics from your render setup and not within your V-Ray properties because this is enabling caustics versus through your properties is telling you which specific object uses caustics. Um, doing it through your caustics render settings means all your lights will be affected by caustics and will give off caustics, which is essentially like usually what you want to do unless you're doing going for a high degree of control, which usually aren't necessarily going for. It's not necessary. Um, but that was a basic introduction to caustics. Um, I would rather, like you re recommend slowly adding the effects on and then just doing like keeping your IPR on or doing test renders as you go just to make sure you're not getting any weird things um, especially because caustics can start getting pixelated or can start messing with your resolution and whatnot um, is there anything you guys like wanted to see or like wanted to mess around with necessarily with caustics or with the Abe? I, I would like to say something. Um, first, thank you so much, Lauren. Um, that was really, uh, really wonderful. And I, I appreciate the different renderings that you did to show uh, exactly what those settings change. Um, one thing that I want to reiterate that you had um, touched on was that, you know, slowly add these on um, Abe, uh, is a really in, um, computationally intensive uh, calculation, and of course, caustics are as well. Uh, and when you turn up the photon count, the max photon count, um, that can sometimes exponentially increase your rendering time. Um, so compounding these sort of effects right now is not um, as uh, drastic, right? You have a few objects, a few materials, but uh, imagine if you have um, more complex materials, uh, you add bump maps and things or displacement maps, um, which we'll, we'll get into, you know, in lesson four, this can get really, really complex and computationally intense. Um, and your render time can go from an hour to um, several days, right? So, uh, and I'm not, I'm not um, underestimate, I mean, I, I'm not understating that. Um, so just keep these things in mind. It's important to also save before you make some of these changes um, because you know you, we get in here and we kind of science experiment, change variables and forget which variables we changed. <laughs> um, and then a rendering, like I said, could end up taking days instead of um, hours or even minutes. Um, so definitely keep track of these files and I would definitely save um, before you make any major changes to the V-Ray or material setting. So again, yeah, thank like, you so much, Lauren. This was wonderful. Yeah, um, I think like for reference, in those first three renders, I did the one that didn't have caustics or ABBA took like 22 seconds versus the one that had both took like five minutes and 20 seconds. So it's just like 
And that was a really low resolution, really low pixel ratio render. And it still has a significant difference. Yeah, Lauren, thank you for the tutorial. That was great. And um, also, that was a good point, Nick. Do we have um, a spot in the public folder where these sources could be uploaded? Because like, I have them and I'm like, I was planning on sharing them. I wasn't sure like the best way to like get them out to everyone. I don't believe that we have a folder um, set up for this class yet. Um, you're more than welcome to set one up or um, we can add it to uh, the Canvas page um, alternatively. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with putting it on the Canvas page if that works too. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any, from the people who uh, joined at eight, do you have any questions um, maybe not related to caustics or uh, anything else? Or are you just, just here for some learning? <laughs> um, I have a question that maybe you could help me with that we can meet afterwards to talk about. Okay. Anyone else? Have, um, Talisha, have you tried these yet? I know you had a really nice um, kind of setup going on with your render. Um, are these things you've experimented with that didn't work or um, you were curious about them and wanted to learn more before you used it? I wanted to learn more before I used it. It's a great idea. <laughs> That's a great idea. Um, all right. Well, um, Lauren, uh, do you have anything else that you'd like to share? Um, yeah, I'd say like, um, I'd welcome like doing your own, your own like research into classes because it's like extensive and there's tons of resources out there. Um, YouTube can get a bit muddled just because it's really hard to find updates, tutorials on 3ds Max. So like, you might have to wade through a lot of sources, but like they are out there if you do want to look for them. Never be afraid to Google. All right, thank you so much. I gotta head out and help some friends with some Wi-Fi issues, but uh, thanks for everything. Bye guys. Thank you for coming, Andres. Thank you. You're welcome.